the Easterner, faith is how you live. The Hebrew word is emunah. Paul writes, the just shall live by faith. He takes that from Habakkuk. And Habakkuk says, the just shall live by emunah, faithfulness. So Paul actually ends up saying exactly the opposite of what Christians have done. Paul ends up saying, the just will live by faithfulness, obedience. And we say, no, the just will live by believing because obedience is no longer necessary. To a Westerner, if you want to judge, and I'm being really critical here, I love my tradition, God has given me enormous things through my Western seminary education, I'm not honestly against it, I bless God for what he's taught you. I want you to see how radically different the way Easterners think. If you want to know a given Bible study or sermon, is it East or West? At the end of a Western sermon, the question is, do you agree with this? Do you believe this? At the end of an Eastern sermon, always, what must I do? Because it's not about what you know. It's about who you are. I think I put that up here too. I'm way ahead of my... Oh, that's another thing I didn't even think about. Well, I thought about it because I put it here, but I haven't thought in a while. <laughs> a Greek says, who am I? You been on one of those pilgrimages trying to figure out who you are? It's like an onion, you know, you peel all these layers to see who you really are, and then you get to the middle and there aren't any layers anymore, and it's gone. It's like, who am I? Well, I was the onion. <laughs> Greeks always want to know, who am I? And if I remember right, being at your point in life, that was big for me. Who, who really am I? Who am I? Life has to have meaning. What's the meaning of life? I'm going to figure it out someday. Those are good things. Let me show you how an Easterner thinks. An Easterner says, what should I do? Not, who am I? Who you are is determined by what you do. So get out there and do. Then you'll know who you are. Don't sit and think, who am I? Whoever, this is an Easterner. And life doesn't have meaning. Life has purpose. Not what's the meaning of life. What's the purpose of life? Because meaning finds its place to an Easterner in purpose. Here's a big one. When the Easterner versus Westerner, when the Easterner is asked the question, he or she prefers to tell you a story. Because the story allows you to enter the experience. Let me show you. There are about 3,500 parables, by the way, that you could get a hold of and read from Jesus' time. As far as I can tell, only three are completely original to Jesus. What Jesus did was to borrow well-known Aesop's fables, not really, but parables that everybody knew, and to use them sometimes in new ways, sometimes not, but he often changes one key detail. Let me show you one example. This one moves me very deeply because of some personal stuff in my own past. You know the parable of the prodigal son? From a Western point of view, anybody got guts here? What would you say the prodigal sin was? If you had to summarize in five words, what's his sin? What did he do wrong? Okay, one at a time. Abandoned his father. Disobeyed his father. Squandering money. Living sexually immoral life. He said, I want you dead. Is, acted he like you want. Okay, those are all true. You know what the Jew would say was his sin? The Jew would say the sin of the prodigal is that he thought he could live by himself without his community. If you live without a community, life is going to destroy you. You can't do it alone. He sinned the moment he said, Dad, I'm not leaving the faith. We all think he's leaving the faith. He didn't say, I'm going to go live in Las Vegas and, 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 and live immorally. He said, Dad, I'm going out there and guess what? I don't need the community anymore. I can do it myself. Anyway, somebody came to Jesus and asked him a question about God. And Jesus told a well-known parable. The Jewish version of the parable goes like this. A kid commits a terrible sin and thinks he can make it on his own. So he says, Dad, give me my share of the inheritance. And he goes off and lives riotously. After feeding pigs, which he hit bottom, especially in a Jewish context, after feeding pigs, he thinks to himself, there's a rabbinic law interpreting the passage, obey your parents, which says if you break community, for the sake of community, you can't go back 
as a community member, but you can come back as a slave or a servant. So the kid thinks, I'd rather be a slave in my community than a free person where I can't live for God. So he comes home. Now, in the Jewish parable, as he approaches his home, he meets his father. Accidentally, it doesn't say that, but that's the implication. He says to his father, I've sinned against you and against... See, you're Western. That's okay. What would have been in the Jewish mind is Yahweh. But no Jew would ever say Yahweh. Jesus is never once in his entire life ever recorded as saying God's name. He would not have said it. It's too sacred. So you use a synonym. The number one synonym for God or for Yahweh is heaven. I've sinned against you and against heaven. What is heaven? Yahweh. I can't come back as your son. Let me come back as your slave. The father began to cry. Said, son, when you left, you broke community. For the sake of community, you can never come home. And he closed the door. And the family gathered around the weeping old man, consoling him and encouraging him for having done the righteous thing. Now here you are, be Jesus listeners. And somebody asked a question about what's God like? And Jesus said, and there was a young man who went to his dad and said, give me the inheritance. I can do it on my own. What are you thinking? You know the story. You know what's coming. Now what's going to be interesting is how does this rabbi use the story? Because all rabbis use the same stories. And Jesus said, the kid woke up one morning and said, I can't do it alone. Look what I'm doing. I'm feeding pigs for God's sake. I can go home and be my dad's slave. So he goes home. Are you with me? Are you tracking? Now, come back to Jesus. And every day, the father went down the street looking for his son. And one day, in the distance, he saw him coming. And he ran to meet him. And he threw his arms around him. And wept. And his son said, Dad, I've sinned against you and against heaven. I cannot come home as your son. Let me come back as your slave. And the dad says in plain English, Shut up! You're my son. I love you. Come home with me. And Jesus is looking at his audience and they're all going, Whoa. And now Jesus wants to make a point. He is a master. So he adds a PS. And the older brother came and said, Dad, what are you doing? And Dad said, He's my son. I love him. Welcome him home. Now the rabbis call what I just did Shanan. Ask me about it later. Now every rabbi I've ever seen, my mentors, and I see Jesus in those same eyes, at that point your eyes light with fire. Because you've got your audience hooked. You're feeling the power of a father who would go looking for his son and welcome him back under any and all conditions. And now the rabbi, this is going to come out of his soul. And that's what God is like! <laughs>